we have been trying to understand short run production function and in the previous video we looked at productivity of each worker as if by name and we call this marginal product of labor and we also saw that initially when the firm starts to hire workers we observe what is called the law of increasing marginal product of labor and then as we hire more and more workers law of diminishing marginal product of labor sets in look at this chart one that we used in the previous two videos and and what we find is if the total output produced by one worker is 5 units what is the average productivity for per worker for the first worker it will be 5 and what is the average productivity per worker when the firm decides to hire two workers two workers together produce 12 units of output or on an average each worker produces 6 units of output when the firm hires three workers the total output produced is 21 and average output produced per worker when we have three workers is now seven sometimes instead of looking at marginal product of labor firms would like to know what is average productivity per worker and it is important for the firms to know this and we'll understand the significance of this in some subsequent videos so through this total output curve we can also measure average productivity and for average productivity we use the concept called average product of labor APL in short and this is simply the average output produced per worker and how do we measure it it's simply dividing total output by total number of workers when we had one worker the output produced was five and so APL was five when we had two workers the total output produced was 12 and so average productivity per worker was six and in this way one could calculate all those productivities so let us calculate average product of labor based on the numbers that we have been using and for the first worker we have already established it is five for the second worker it is six for the third worker it is seven for the fourth worker it is seven again for the fifth worker it is six point eight for the sixth worker it is 6.5 for the seventh worker it is 6.0 and for the eighth worker again these numbers are missing and we can figure this out and this will be five units now <clears throat> here what you find is as we change the number of workers average productivity per worker also does not stay constant it goes on changing and so so this is what we observe when we look at these numbers in this chart chart 3 what I have done is we have average product of labor on the vertical axis number of workers on the horizontal axis and what we find is <clears throat> now what we do is we simply use those average product of labor numbers plot them onto this graph and join them and what we get is an APL curve and once again what you'll observe is initially when we hire workers average productivity per worker increases and as we hire more and more workers average productivity of worker starts to decline and we'll try to understand this phenomena 
When we look at the APL curve, we find as we increase number of workers, initially average product of labor increases. It hits a maximum, and as we add more workers, the average product of labor starts to decline. Or in terms of shape, it is pretty much like the MPL curve. And these kind of shapes are simply referred to as inverted U or inverted V. So why is APL curve shaped the way it is? And that is like an inverted U or inverted V. So to understand that, let us look at this table. We have number of workers here. We have the total output produced by workers. And here what I have done is I have placed the marginal product of labor in the second column. Now look at the following. Suppose the firm hires the first worker and this worker produces five units of output. So what is the total output produced by the firm? It will be five units. The firm hires the second worker and the second worker produces seven units of output. The first worker produces five units of output. So how much is the total output produced by both workers together? It is 12. The firm hires the third worker. And this worker, sorry for this typo, produces nine units of output. The first two workers together produce 12 units of output. Now the third worker produces 9 units of output. So the total output produced by three workers will be 21. Or in other words, the total output produced by a firm is simply a running total or a cumulative total of output produced by each worker and or MPL. And so from MPL, we get total output figures. Once we have the total output figures, it's relatively straightforward for us to derive average product of labor or average productivity. And, and you know how to calculate this. Now look at another phenomena, and that is the productivity of the first worker as if by name is 5. What is average productivity per worker? If we have one worker, it will be 5. It's the same. <clears throat> now when we hire the second worker, the productivity of the second worker is 7, which is greater than the productivity, average productivity, when we had one worker, 5. So 7 is greater than 5. So what happens to average productivity? It increases it increases to six now we have the third worker and and the productivity of the third worker is greater than the average productivity of the first two workers and so what happens to the average product of labor when we calculate this for three workers it'll be seven units or what the point that I'm trying to emphasize is the following. Total output depends on how much output is produced by each worker as if by name. And what is average product of labor? It is simply a residual or a derived number. And where is it derived from? It's derived from total quantity of output. And where does total quantity of output come from? It comes from MPL. So there is a relationship between marginal and average, and that is what we look at. <clears throat> so in the next slide, what I'll do is I'll give you some general rules about the relationship between marginal and average, and we'll go from there. So from the previous table, it appears there is some kind of a pattern about the relationship between marginal and average product. Now, there is a mathematical relationship between the concept of marginal and average. And let us just apply this to some other situation. Suppose we are looking at a student who enrolls in college. And this person is enrolled <clears throat> only in one course. And 
just to make life easy for ourselves. So let us call this semester one. And this person is enrolled only in one course. Now, the GPA that this person receives in this particular semester, we call this marginal. It is as if by name. And name of what? The semester. <clears throat> so let's just call this marginal GPA or MGPA in short. And then what you receive on your transcript is cumulative GPA or what is simply an average GPA. <clears throat> so suppose this young person comes to college and believes that it's a party town and does not come to the classes and what he gets at the end of the semester is an F or a GPA of zero. So what will be his cumulative GPA at the end of semester one? It will be zero. Now, the student who has come is a very bright student. And so in the second semester, this person becomes very serious. And at the end of the semester, as you would expect, this person gets an A or a 4.0. Now, what will be his average GPA or cumulative GPA after two semesters? It will be 4 divided by 2, and that will be 2. Now look at the third semester, and this person is back to where he was on the first semester and gets an F, and this becomes zero. So at the end of the third semester, what will be his average GPA or cumulative GPA? It will be 1.33. <clears throat> now look at the following. After semester one, the average GPA of this person is zero. And in the second semester, this person ups his GPA in the second semester. And what happens to the cumulative GPA or the average? It is pulled up. And so here you see marginal is greater than average. On what happens to average, it increases. Now in the third semester, the student goes back to the habits of the first semester and gets an F for the course. And now look at his relationship between marginal and average. Marginal is less than average, so what happens? It brings down the average to 1.33. Now these are some rules and these are very important. And several questions are asked on the test based on these relationships. And that is... <clears throat> If marginal is greater than average, average will increase. This is what we observed here. And if marginal is less than average, average will decrease. This is what we observe here. Now, if we have a sequence that initially marginal is greater than average, then we know average will increase. And then the marginal curve will intersect average curve from above at average curve's maximum point. I'll show this in the next slide. But if the sequence is reversed, that is, initially if you have marginal is less than average, and then that switches to marginal being greater than average, in such a case, the marginal curve it will intersect average curve from below and at average curve's minimum point. So just remember, these are important rules, and you should remember them. And there is a relationship between marginal and average concepts, and we can apply this to different situations. Now, this chart brings in both MPL and APL curves, and the green curve is the MPL curve, the blue one is the APL curve, and what you find is the following. Here in this zone, marginal is greater than average, so what is happening to average? It is increasing. And then here, marginal becomes less than average. So what is happening to average? It has started going down. And since we have a sequence like this, the marginal curve intersects the average curve from above. And 7 happens to be the maximum average product of labor. So this is how we can use this relationship on this MPL and APL curves. Thank you for your time.